Hello, everyone. David Alfred Ostrowski. And in this recording, I'm going to introduce you to the world of Squeak Smalltalk, where Squeak exists as a dialect of the extremely object oriented small talk language, which is perhaps the most uh, most extensive implementation of the object oriented paradigm, right? So here we are, we we'll start you from ground zero. We're going to go through some simple examples. Here I'm at squeak.org, and this is where you can download a copy that can be readily run from your Windows type machine. I'm just going to do a download, which I've already done. I'm just going to show you where to get it and how to start up your environment and get running. Let's do that. So I went to the downloads and I picked, you can either go into the Windows 64 link or 32-bit uh, uh, bundles. I downloaded a number of them. I don't see one working any better than the other. So down that file, be careful to, or remember to unzip the file. So if you unzip it, here I'm just running it directly out of my download folder. I did an unzip with a 7-zip uh, utility. And then you see here you have the icon will show up that it's unzipped. If it's zipped, it may not run appropriately. So I'm just going to click on that, and that should bring up my Squeak environment. Welcome to Squeak. Let's just skip and get right to it. I'm going to go full screen on this. And here is our environment. So there's a lot of integration with multimedia. There's a lot of fancy things that you can do to create games or engage with GUI type interfaces. I'm not going to cover that. We're going to just give you um, some background on the Squeak small talk language and some of the basic constructs, most importantly, to tie into the use of objects and why this is viewed at the range of least to greatest object oriented programming to exist at the highest level of object oriented programming. So we're only going to need two windows. So I'm going to go to tools up in the upper right hand corner and I'm going to bring in the transcript and I'm going to bring in the workspace. And these are the only two that I'm going to really need. Um, there's more help that you can uh, obviously uh, leverage as you work through, uh, in particular, looking up the uh, references of the given objects. But to do our examples, this is all that we need to be concerned with. Let's do the basics of the whole world. And along with that, give you a base explanation of some of the general philosophies running with Squeak Small Talk. So here I'm going to type directly into the workspace to and I'm going to run everything at kind of like a pseudo interpretive command prompt, which you just type in the workspace and then you type execute or use it through the click, which I'll show you in a second. And that'll give your output will be sent to the transcript. So here I can do a transcript show colon and I can say hello world as such. Don't forget the period, everything needs a period. I'm gonna highlight that and I'm going to right click on that. I'm going to say, do it and click the do it. And there is my first Hello World program. So what did we do? And here we can start with some of the basic tenets of Small Talks Week and why it's so unique and influential across just about every programming language that exists. In small talk squeak, everything is an object. It's an object or a method associated with an object. So that's the first and foremost rule. All communication in squeak small talk is triggered through message sends and about all 
executable expressions are of this form of a receiver object and a message. So all objects have a parent class also uh, as object, obviously. And there is, uh, everything has a parent class except for uh, object itself, which is exists as uh, the highest level. I think that proto object exists technically above the object and that obviously has no parent, but everything else has the parent object of object. Okay, well, eventually up to up the hierarchy, all right. So let's uh, build on what we know here. So uh, here we have uh, a string that's being sent and that string, that hello world, it exists obviously as an object. And um, transcript show acts as a method. This acts as this um, means of sending that object uh, to the transcript to print that out. So that exists as a uh, trigger and that sends the message here almost in synonymous fashion that messages and methods kind of exist along the same level of existence here. So when you think about methods, uh, they operate, okay, by the use of messages. So they're very uh, close in functionality here, though obviously they're not exactly the same. So let's do a couple of simple operations here. Let's say, let's can keep that transcript show. And just to eliminate confusion, I can uh, just eliminate my uh, my output here. Let's declare a variable and start from there. I'm going to call it a value, and I make an assignment by a colon equal to two. So, so in a normal universe, okay, I'd be assigning two to that memory location. Here, a value exists as a pointer to an object, and I am making a communication or assignment, which exists again as a method, which sends that value of two, which is an object, right, to that, uh, to be assigned to that um, object that's being pointed to by a value. And now I can print out a value here. As such. And if I want to run that, I can highlight that. I can do a control D as well, and that will do it. And you see the two is printed out there, a small object too. And if you want to know more about the hierarchy, that's where some of the extra windows come in. I'm not going to look at that right now. But if you have to get a comfort level working with some of the basic operations, you can dig deeper into the object hierarchy and get a greater understanding of what the API allows for you to build upon. And as mentioned, there is a lot of support here for the generation of graphics, for the uh, uh, manipulation of displays and, uh, and the control of multimedia. Okay, so let me take just some, a little bit more advanced examples here. I'm going to dig into my GitHub, which I posted some examples. Let's do a conditional. And I'm going to replace my workspace with it. So I'm just going to copy this in so you don't have to see me type errors. And let's execute it. And then we can break it down, right? And uh, accordingly. So to execute this, and again, be careful of those nasty periods that will give you errors. So here I have the message string object nine times, actually printed out nine times. So let's break down that code here. So I have 
small integer a, which points to an object that's assigned the small integer one object, right? And that's accomplished through that assignment operator, which acts as through the mechanism of triggering that message sent. Okay. Uh, next, I have an evaluation. And this this a greater than 10. So a is obviously not uh, greater than 10. So it's going to be false. This returns a Boolean and Boolean exists as an object. And in the evaluation, I have the expression almost in a curd like fashion, right? So here we see the overlap between some of the functional based programming principles and object oriented uh, design that I have the less than uh, symbol acting as a method that's supporting a comparison of A to the value pointed to by the reference pointer to an object of A, the 10 rather to A. So that exists as an expre uh, expression and that returns an object of Boolean. And that's continually tested with the while true method. Following that and the brackets indicate a message send. Okay, in the first bracket here with the expression in it, that sent the Boolean object to be evaluated, returning true or false. The next is performing the associated code. Actually, two separate independent actions actually more than two right of the a plus one expression, that being passed through a method to update a, the a object. And then following that, I have the message send object transcript show sending that message for each successive time that it passes through. So again, through this very simple operation, you can see a number of different um, operations being performed, right, that support um, the object oriented paradigm to perhaps the most, again, the most extensive uh, implementation that's really can't be any more object oriented than this type of operation. Let's throw in another example and take a look at that. Here we explore some additional variations on this thing. Happy in another example here. Happy didn't work. Let me grab it again. There we go. Once again, I have if then else, or if true or false, similar nature to support an if else construct. Do the do it. Explain a little bit here. Let's see. I got an oddball character executed. Okay, so it came out false. So what do we do here? And following the same construct, right? These are all um, message send type operations with the objects in each individual line. Here, once again, I make the assignment of the object small integer to uh, a, which is pointing to an object. It's accomplished through the assignment operation, which access a method. Similar nature to the next line. Next line, I have a more extensive operation. Each is returning two Boolean objects that are create another Boolean expression through similar mechanisms that I just described. And then I, here I have, so this, 
you can imagine that it returns a Boolean object of type true or false. And that is tested with the Boolean exists. And you can look up the class hierarchies to really dig deeper on these small examples. The if true makes a test against that. And it either allows the message passing to occur with the transcript show. Uh, and it's either going to be true or false, right? So you can either get one or the next. And in this case, uh, the statement evaluated false. You got the associated output. So, so I hope this helps. And uh, please reference my GitHub, uh, which is uh, the David Alfred Ostrowski Squeak Small Talk. Hold something here. Four more examples. I'll be covering more examples in class as well. Okay. Thanks for listening. Take care. Bye now.